Good morning, everybody. Um, I am Sue Waits with the chair for the Jonah Environmental Task Force, and thank you for having me today. I recognize a lot of people out there, a lot of people who've been involved in different environmental groups and also with Jonah. So um, keep it casual. If you've got things to add, please raise your hand or just chime right in. So, um, but Sean will be advancing the slides. I can't really see them from here, but that's the, um, the logo for the, the Jonah Environmental Task Force. Um, <laughs> Oh, that's perfect. Thanks. At least I can kind of see which one I'm on. That's even better. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> There's a little bit of glare, so if you need to move or whatever. Um, but so today I'm just going to touch on just very broadly. Um, what the about the Jonah Environmental Task Force? It is one of seven task forces with Jonah. So, um, and the the website, which I will put at the end, but it's JonahJustice.org, and it does overview all the different task forces. And then there is a tab for the environmental, so you can always find more information there. But that'll be at the end of the presentation. So, if you want to just so our four areas of focus. I mean, as you know, when it comes to environmental. There are so many issues. It touches everything. So we don't want to, we collab, one of the key things we do, which I put number four, is we collaborate with different groups throughout the community. We have picked, the, the first three here are things that we focus on. Um, the first one being plastics, to increase community awareness about single-use plastics. We're, you know, those plastics that are used just once and thrown away. Um, I'll get into some of the things we're doing there. And I've got the, the team shirt on for single-use plastics to do away with plastic bags. Um, the second one is composting. Um, to in, one of our goals is to increase composting participation among Eau Claire County residents. And this is brought about by a DNR audit that showed that about 40% of the landfill is compostables. So if we had a stronger composting awareness and education, we could reduce our landfill, which was expanded recently. And with composting, we could delay that a, a, even more. Um, so biodiversity is our third goal. And I'll talk more about that. Um, but that is to preserve and increase biodiversity in the Chippewa Valley. And then the fourth one, as I mentioned, was collaborating with those other environmental groups in the community. So if you could go to the next slide. So as far as I'll talk about the first one here is plastics. Um, one of the first, I guess I'll, we, one of the things that we did recently is we introduced a plastic-free Eau Claire pledge. And this was introduced at the Earth Week event in April. And that is something to raise awareness about plastics and something, and it, the next slide I'll um, go to it after I'm done here, but it just talks about things that we can all individually do. Uh, when we talk about plastics, it, it's so overwhelming. Only about 4% of plastics are actually recycled. So plastics used are plastics here to stay. So the best thing we can do is just try to find things in our lives that we can, you know, find alternatives for. So we really promote people to, you know, start simple, just pick four things. Maybe it's the bags, or maybe it's cutlery, or maybe it's your coffee cup. And um, the Plastic Free Pledge just raises awareness about that. And the, the second bullet here is Beyond Plastics is a national organization that is introducing federal legislation and working with states and lots of different groups such as ours. We became an affiliate, which gives us a broader scope and also um, allows us to learn what other communities are doing and maybe things that we can do as well. Um, the third thing that the Environmental Task Force is doing in the area of plastics is we do lots of tabling events throughout the community. Um, if you've been 
were at Hy-Vee on, um, oh, I think that was Friday, they were um, handing out cloth bags and talking to people about um, stop using, I mean, plastic, use cloth bags, take your own bag to the grocery store instead of using the plastics. So those are, that was one thing. We did that in May, July, and we'll do it again in September. Um, we've been at the Sounds Like Summer concert series, um, and then the fall festival is another thing. So if you're interested in, in if plastics is your thing, um, we're always looking for uh, volunteers and different ways that we can reach out in the community. Oh, and one thing I was gonna mention, when it comes to plastics, in the state of Wisconsin, we are, um, there's, it's called a, uh, a ban on bans. We, as a state, we are not allowed to put any legislation on plastic containers. So people always say, well, California outlawed plastic bags, we should do the same. Well, in the state of Wisconsin, we can't do that. So our only strategy, well, I don't want to say only, but the strategy we use then is awareness. So we can't, um, we can't say, well, we're just going to outlaw bags, or we can't um, do anything with takeout containers or so forth. So it's really an awareness issue. This is the Plastic Free Pledge. And as you see, it's, it's really meant to, to raise awareness about the things that we can do as individuals. And this is on our website. And you can go to the website and take the pledge. Um, and I'll have it at the end of the presentation as well. So the next area of focus is composting. This is probably old news for all of you here since you compost. <laughs> um, but it's new for a lot of people. And one thing that the Jonah Environmental Task Force has done, we collaborate with Eau Claire County and um, promoting composting in the schools. This last year, six elementary schools started composting. And as volunteers then, and Bobby's here, she, I think, did you work in one of the schools? Yeah. Which was a fun experience to get the kids um, composting. So we hope to have even more elementary schools um, in the next school year. And also working with them to introduce a food share program to where unopened food um, can go back to a pantry or something of the sort. Currently, any unopened, unused, uneaten food in the school district goes in the trash. So, um, lots of opportunity for change there. Um, and again, some other things the Jonah Environmental Task Force does for composting is um, tabling events and then also at the Fall Festival. We are working with, with Decky to introduce maybe um, uh, waste-free food trucks. Um, there has been a little bit of food trucks could be using compostables and we could do away with a lot of the um, plastic cutlery and so forth. So that's going to be probably a big push for the next year or two. So if you've got any ideas in that area, we welcome um, anybody who wants to get involved there. So the next slide is our third goal and biodiversity. Um, so this is one where the Jonah Environmental Task Force, we collaborated with many different environmental groups in the Chippewa Valley to form the Chippewa Valley Biodiversity Partnership. And this is one where it's this huge, really large collaborative effort to increase biodiversity. So this is everything from um, not using pesticides and herbicides on your lawn, being nice to insects, planting natives to um, encourage those good bugs to come to our yard, all of these things to support the biodiversity. Um, we talked to before the service about the, um, our streams and lakes. I mean, all of that has to do with preserving our, um, the Chippewa Valley here. So most of, a lot of the work of the Biodiversity Partnership is based on this book by Douglas Tolome. I don't know who's read this book, but if you haven't, I would suggest you do. <laughs> um, he was here last October as part of the Chippewa Valley Book Fest. And it is 
probably one of the more hopeful books I've read when it comes to environmental issues and what as individuals we can do in our own little patch, meaning our yard or, you know, I see you've got a lot of flowers here, the, just your community, of what we can do to preserve biodiversity. So, um, so that's a must read if you haven't done that. That's available at the library or um, you can order it as well. It's called Nature's Best Hope by Douglas Ptolemy. But the, so this book motivated the Chippewa Valley Biodiversity Partnership. When many people read this book, they were, you know, we want to do something. We want to preserve biodiversity in the Chippewa Valley. And from that, um, different groups formed, and we have five work groups as a part as a part of this collaborative effort. The last bullet there lists the five work groups. Um, education, demonstration gardens, policy, invasive abatement, and native plants. Um, Harper's leading the, the group on native plants. And then, Don oh, nurseries. Yeah, okay, I call it native plants, sorry, nurseries. It's to, it's to educate the nurseries about native plants and then to have more native plants available in the nurseries. And then Don is leading, Don back there is leading the group on invasives, um, ridding the forest of buckthorn and garlic mustard so that more natives can thrive. Um, and then we've got other people, the, like demonstration gardens, I don't know if you've noticed at the Children's Museum, we put in a pollinator garden in front, that's part of the a group of volunteers from this group that did that and we're hoping to do other gardens in the area. Um, policy, um, Eau Claire, the city of Eau Claire is going through a zoning update and we're working to get biodiversity reflected in some of the zoning, so that landscaping includes more native plants. But there's lots of opportunity to get involved. Um, multiple organizations, as I've listed here, everything from the county to the Sustainability Advisory Committee, um, the Garden Club, Master Gardeners, Beaver Creek, Prairie Enthusiasts, which you support here, are all involved in this initiative. And then the, the fourth bullet, which is kind of overlaps everything that Jonah does, has to do with collaboration. And I don't know, probably many of you are involved with, you know, whether it's Sierra Club or the Eau Claire Water Alliance or um, Landmark Conservancy. I mean, there are so many environmental groups. You, you kind of lose sight on well, which one do I go to. And so we're, we try to work with all of them to, so that we can have a bigger impact. And one thing that we did last year um, is we had the, Jonah was one of the primary organizers for the Earth Week Open House which was at the Brewing Project um, during Earth Week. So this year we're hoping to have it at the Sontag Center and have a big open house with um, workshops and places you can bring your electronics recycling, um, everything from bike repair to water testing and so forth. So that's in the planning stages right now for next April. So it's something to um, keep your eyes open for. Um, so here are the resources I mentioned. Um, the Jonah website, if you want to just take a picture of this um, slide, is jonahjustice.org. And that will take you to the Plastic Free Pledge. You can find the meeting dates for our group. Um, there's also an interest survey. So if you're kind of like, well, I, I'd like to do something with plastics, um, you can take the interest survey and that will send an email back to me as the organizer to say, okay, we've got somebody here that wants to be involved so that we can plug you in. Um, it's just a quick and easy way to, to indicate what you'd like to get involved with. Um, if, the, if you'd rather just jump right over the Jonah and get involved with the Biodiversity Partnership, um, here's the website for that. You can also indicate if you'd like to be on the, the mailing list for that. And we can let you, we don't really meet, it's the action groups that meet. Um, we try to limit our meeting times and 
um, so forth. But, um, but if you would like to be on the mailing list, please let us know. And the next slide is, so what can you do? I listed a few things. I, I know your congregation here does have a, I don't know what you call it. A lot of, a lot of groups call it a green team. Um, we do have what we call an interfaith green team. We're a once a month. All the different congregations throughout the Chippewa Valley that have green teams, we, we meet and we exchange ideas. Um, some congregations, such as yourself, are, most of them are composting already. Some host workshops, some have speakers. Um, I know at my congregation we did a metal scrap collection during Earth Week and raised money for the youth. Um, it's just a great way to come together with other congregations and see, get ideas and um, so forth. So if you wanted to be in the mailing list for that, I think UU is already on there, but um, I don't know, Ralph, are you the contact for that? Could be, could be. Okay, okay. <laughs> um, the, as the second bullet thing on something that you could do is take the plastic free pledge. And I know it seems somewhat passive, like, well, I'm just taking a pledge, what does it matter? But it does raise your awareness about things that you can personally do on plastics. As well as the fact that um, it kind of gets you in the pool. We've got about, I think, I don't know if I mentioned, about 150 people that have taken the pledge. We hope to get those numbers up so then when if we go to city council, we can say, you know, we've, we've got over a thousand people in this community that this is important to them. So we are trying to get those numbers up. Um, and also just obviously raise awareness. The other thing, if you would like to join and attend a meeting, um, like I said, we meet about every other month and you can go to the website and take that interest survey and get put on the mailing list and, and um, Attend, attend a meeting and find out more on a regular basis what we're doing. Um, if biodiversity is where your interest is, um, just working in your own yard, planting more natives. I did bring, um, this is the sign I have in my yard. Um, we have these signs that's for the homegrown national park, which is part of the book. Um, which is just promoting, and it has the QR code for the Chippewa Valley Biodiversity Partnership, as well as the QR code for Homegrown National Park. So we have these signs available if that's something that you're doing in your yard. And again, it just raises awareness in your community, in your neighborhood, on what that's all about. And, and lastly, um, just a simple thing um, based you know, what people talked about, just do something sometimes, and just talking to other people. It's been shown, um, Catherine Hayhoe, which is a, she's a climatologist, she said one of the best things that we can all do is to talk about it. So raising awareness within your friend groups, your communities, your families, your neighborhoods, and talking about what you're doing or what you could do um, does have an impact. And people just kind of think, oh, you know, plastic-free pledge. I hadn't really thought about that. Yeah, I could, I could take my own bag. What does one, ba you know? So, so that is something that that we can all do. And I'll just end with um, the plastic-free pledge is the last one up here. And um, that QR code will take you directly to the pledge, or you can find it on. Um, on the website too.